Greetings, and welcome to episode 58. In today's episode, we'll be discussing politics. Don't worry, it's not what you think. Stick around, you might get a kick out of this. <laughs> anyway, if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, politics. In a, in a minute, I'm going to explain why it's about politics and at the same time not about politics. <laughs> I meant what I said when I said it wasn't what you think it is. So, here we go. Politics. When you add rules to spirituality, you get politics. <laughs> also, when you add rules to spirituality, you, it also becomes a religion. Instead of just valuable information to help a person on the path toward enlightenment. The reason why it becomes politics is because if enough people follow this particular path and then suddenly you set rules and you give it a name, because you have to give it a name after you give it rules, now you have a vast number of people that can be easily swayed one way or the other. So it becomes a political tool. Politics. This is why I don't pick any religion. I mean, if you get down to the esoteric in any religion, they all pretty much say the same thing. The only thing that's different is the rules, if you notice. And a lot of them have a lot of the same rules. So you're not even really different on that it's just basically what it comes down to it is the only thing different about each different religion is the name of that different religion because <laughs> huh. a lot of the rules are the same I mean some religions nitpick more than others but basically they all say the same thing not just the esoteric part portion, uh, not the stories, I mean the rules, even some of the nitpicking is the same. So all you have is a different name. And they say there's nothing new between earth and sky, so to view, the way I view religion is, it, it simply put, it's a political tool. And I can't imagine that it was any different then, back when it all, when religion started, not these paths toward enlightenment. Once upon a time, it wasn't religion. You, 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 you went to them, you learned, and you went about your business. Either you went and you became a yogi or a hermit somewhere and you, you lived this path, or you went and taught this path to others but it wasn't a religion it didn't come to you you had to go to it <coughs> but as time went on things became or things should I say things began to organize people wanted a, a distinct thing rather than just well this information is good but what about rules our people shouldn't do this this will distinguish our people from their people well then we gotta give it a name <laughs> this will also also distinguish our path from their path because our path is better <laughs> now back in the day religious power was 
indistinguishable from political power. They were one and the same. But back then, church and state hadn't been separated. Church and state is separated today to the extent that the church can no longer dictate what the rules are. But they can sway opinion because of the vast numbers they have in the ranks. And I try to stay out of politics, so I, I find it hard to pick a, any particular religion. I don't think religion is inherently bad. Well, it's been written that religion, all religions, are an abomination to God, but that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is some of these religions, if you actually read their holy book, they're very, it's quite beautiful. I mean, just, you get a rich history of the people involved, you get the, uh, the culture, uh, a good look at the culture. Uh, not and not necessarily the modern version of that culture, but the way it was when it this religion first came about. <clears throat> Excuse me. But to pick one in this day and age, and I can imagine it. Like I said, it was the same back when these religions were first founded. And I'm not just talking about Christianity. Picking a religion nowadays is like picking a political party because if you're in a particular group and this particular group wants a particular thing they're going to vote a certain way and if you don't vote that way they're going to make you feel uncomfortable about your decision Anyone that's, I mean, I don't know if anyone else has been part of a church, but I grew up in the Catholic, in the, in the Catholic church until I was about 13 and decided that, eh, this wasn't enough for me and I needed more. So I went out looking for more. But if you don't do what the church wants you to do, if you're not living the way the church thinks you ought to be living, they don't have any problem letting you know that they're displeased with you. <clears throat> I think that's one of the reasons why my mom, my own mother, quit going to church is because they didn't have any problem letting her know they were displeased with some of her choices in life. And she didn't have any problem letting them know that she was displeased, that they had to open their big mouth about situations they didn't know nothing about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but seriously... You get into that, it's, I mean, there's no difference. It's indistinguishable from politics. The same thing would happen if <clears throat> you're a Republican or Democrat and you feel like, well, I feel like I'm going to vote this way and everyone else votes the other way. They're going to make you feel the same way. They're going to make you feel uncomfortable for your decision that you make. To the point where next time you just might be excluded from the vote. I mean, the first thing politicians, what's the first thing politicians try to do? Before they get any other vote, they go out and try and get the Christian vote. But now that we're even more, and, and I can't say we're even more diverse, because, what is it, two-thirds of the, of the African-American population of America is Muslim? So, but you never hear about them pandering to the Muslim vote. <laughs> you hear them pandering to the Christian vote. Or the Jewish vote. And then after the religion, it breaks down in race. And then age. And then so on and so forth. Then income bracket. I think income bracket is first. And then breaks down from there. Or it could be last. I don't know. I know your vote doesn't count unless you're at a certain income bracket. <laughs> at which point it takes a whole lot of votes to equal one vote. 
which is probably where the whole electoral vote thing came from. Say, you have this many poor people. That equals one vote. <laughs> you have this many rich people. That equals ten votes. And, and what's funny is there'll be three rich people and a million poor people, and a million poor people is one vote. And the three rich people is ten votes. Yeah, their math is all fucked up. <laughs> well, the same thing applies to religion, only there's no real voting. It's just if they decide something and you decide that, that you don't agree with it, it's best if you keep it to yourself because they will, they won't necessarily excommunicate you, but they will make you feel uncomfortable if you continue to show up to events, church, you name it. <clears throat> Which defeats the purpose of the esoteric or spiritual aspects of religion in the first place. I mean, let's 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 face it. When you get down to it, none of that other stuff matters. The only thing that matters is the soul's journey. The only thing that matters. And you can argue, oh, money matters, blah, 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 blah. I'm not talking about the way the world runs. I'm talking the way the world ought to run. Fact. You're only viewing it from a money or political point of view. Or should I say an economic or political point of view. Because... That's the world you grew up in. That's the broken system that was handed to you when you turned 18. Had you been handed a different system, you would stand up and defend that system. Or find a way to add that system to everything you do. That's what we do. I caught myself doing it. I catch myself doing it all the time. How can I fit this broken system into what I'm doing? And that's the problem. You can't fit this broken system into spirituality. It doesn't work. It turns spirituality into a political tool. And it shouldn't be. Well, I would only agree with people that think like I do. I'll agree with anybody that has a good idea. But then that good idea is going to get twisted so they can try and fit it into this broken system. <laughs> Why is the system broken? politics <laughs> it's a circular argument and it's it has you can't even say who which came first chicken or the egg it doesn't matter without politics there'd be no religion we just have this information that leads to enlightenment but someone decided to add rules, kind of like politics. Well, there's rules. There's certain things you just don't do and can't do, and we have to differentiate ourselves from them. And that's what it does. It speaks to us and them. The ultimate argument. Us and them. If you're not one of us, you're one of them. Democrat. We de if I say Democrat, Republican... Uh, libertarian, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, what's the difference? What is the difference? Because no matter what, you choose Democrat over Republican, you choose Christianity over Judaism, you're going to be required and it's going to be assumed of you that you're going to keep up with the group and when the group turns left you can't turn right you're like giving up the option of free thought why because politics with such a powerful tool at their disposal they need every part in the machine working the way they need it to work and one little voice of dissent could send all the dominoes toppling because let's not forget 
you're in that group. You're in whatever political party. You're in whatever religious group. <coughs> the, the party leader or religious leader says, up here we're going to turn left. You're thinking, yes, but all the evidence points to we should turn right. You may be the only one that says it, but that doesn't mean you're the only one that thinks it. And the reason why they can't have you say it out loud is because you might get the other people that want to turn right up there to turn right up there instead of turning left. And if you speak out, and then all of a sudden a third of the people in this party or religious group they all start speaking out. Okay, we should turn right. We should turn right. And what if they just, just have a convincing enough argument to convince another third of the people to turn right? Now, this party leader or this religious leader has now lost control of the group. And they're going to turn right up here. Now, this whatever benefit that this religious leader or party leader was going to gain from turning left up here is now lost and I can guarantee you everybody that decided they were going to turn right is going to be shut out of the group they won't be excommunicated but they'll stop getting those phone calls they'll stop getting those invites well how come he didn't tell me that oh, oh it was nothing it was just a couple of people it was like half the church or half of the the, the, the party you, you're belonging to. So, it's politics. It's a political tool. And it works that way even outside the, the context of what we consider politics, like government politics. Because even within its own sphere of involvement, you could have decisions that the church would make. Like, let's say, the church has a surplus of funds. And you have certain... Uh, the, the pastor wants renovations done to the church. Nothing wrong with the church at all. Nothing. The roof doesn't leak. The windows are brand new. You know, nothing wrong with the church. But the uh, the pastor wants a new building, a new add-on, either an outbuilding or an, another portion of the church built on. But there are some people in the congregation that say, you know, we could take that money and build a house for a, 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 a what do you call it, underprivileged family that maybe can't afford a house but could really use a house. So the pastor uses his influence to get everybody to agree that, no, no, we need to put more space on this church. And what do you think is going to happen to everybody that said, turn right? Because now, if the pastor gets what he wants, even though people voted for him, it still makes him look a little crappy that instead of helping the less fortunate, he added on to the church. Politics. So even outside of the sphere of government, in its own sphere of involvement, it's still politics. Only in a church setting, it's not majority rule. I mean, if it comes down to it, the pastor can just put his foot down and say, this is how it's going to be. But see, that would alienate too many people. He wants to give the, the illusion of free will by letting it be known that you can decide any way you would like, but that intimated threat that, but we'll get you if you don't vote the way we do. <laughs> Same thing with politics. Exact same thing with politics. Only politics controls a wider 
or should I say a broader spectrum than religion? And yes, religion is huge, and there's millions of religious people, and it's global, and this and that. But we're talking in this little town. This little town's church is only going to affect this little town. It's not going to affect the entire country or the entire world. When he, If he builds that building onto the side of his church, or he puts an outbuilding out there, or, or builds the house for this underprivileged family, that's not going to affect uh, foreign policy. That's not going to affect the, the global economy, whereas politics does. But then if you break it down, local politics, state and local politics, usually don't affect the greater scheme of things, but they work much of the same way. I mean, think about it. It works exactly the same way. But instead of pastor, say mayor or governor. I mean, even if you look at the hierarchical structure of a church or of the church, it works much like it. If you know anything about military rank, it, it functions much like the military, if not a political machine unlike not unlike our own government you have the person at the top you have the pope we're using christianity for this model you got the pope you've got over here you've got the president and so on and so forth down, down the spectrum just like in the military you've got the general and so forth and so on down the spectrum so This is why I stay away from religion. Because I try to stay out of politics. And if I have to sell myself short so I can feel like I belong, there's no way in hell I'm going to join a religion. Because if I'm going to do what I think is right, I shouldn't have to worry about retaliation from my fellows just because I did what I thought was the right thing to do. I voted for them to build the house for the underprivileged family. I shouldn't have to worry about retaliation for that. But that's exactly what would happen. And no one's going to firebomb my house, but they're not going to I'm not going to feel welcome the next time I go to church or the next time I go to a church function I'm going to be made to feel like maybe I should just go or it's going to be intimated that we'll let this one slide but the next time you better vote with the rest of the flock and the same thing for politics Like, you've seen it in the news. Everything's going fine, and all of a sudden somebody gets in trouble for something. And it's, gonna, and it's something big. Usually what happens is that person pissed off somebody up the chain, and that's how they got him. They out you for something. You got some secret, boom. You didn't vote the way we wanted you to vote. He's an alcoholic, he bounces checks, he drives drunk, and now he's no longer in politics because we have shamed him as a politician, and now nobody will ever vote for him. When I see those things go on in the news about somebody, oh, so this just came out about so-and-so, I don't start thinking, oh, so-and-so is a horrible person. I start thinking, I wonder who they pissed off that all this came out. Or, I wonder who they pissed off that they would make up such horrible things about this person. Because you can almost tell when it's bullshit and when it's real. And when it's real, who did he piss off? And even when it's bullshit, who did he piss off? Politics. Within everything, politics. Everything we do, it's, it seems like they say, well, there's safety in numbers. No, there's not. Not really. Not really. Because any person with real integrity is not going to fit in 
in a group. It's just not going to happen. Because they're, they're banking on that group think that, hey, let's all turn left up here when what? all the evidence shows we should turn right up here. Why are we turning left? Leave it in God's hands, child. No, no, I'm not leaving it in God's hands. We should turn right up here. We should build the house for the underprivileged family. You don't need another building on the side of this church. <laughs> and that's exactly what it is. It's uh, it's politics. And I'm not bashing religion. If you are a religious person and you are a Christian, Muslim, uh, Jew, or any other religion, I'm not bashing religion. What I'm bashing is that structure within the religion, that unspoken rule that you have to do what the pastor says, or the whatever the name of your religious leader says. And kudos to you if you already know this and avoid it, but still hold fast to your religion. That, that speaks volumes to me about your character, not about the religion you chose, but your character. Integrity. If you could bend it or break it, you wouldn't be able to call it integrity. And if you're not doing what's in your heart, you can't really call yourself a religious person. Because if you're doing what they say because you're afraid of what they think, that's almost as bad as bearing false witness, isn't it? If you stand up and say, yes, I think we should turn left up there, when really you think you should turn right, that's lying. That is lying. It's not like lying. It is lying. And I can't, I can't enter into that. I w won't put myself in harm's way just to say, well, I'm a religious person. I'm not a religious person at all. I don't believe that there's a hierarchical structure for enlightenment. I don't believe that there are rules for enlightenment. I don't believe that there's us and them. If anyone, I mean, if you've taken the time to read any of the any of the holy books, they all say the same damn thing. Their esoteric wisdom that's been removed from their religion almost entirely all says the same damn thing. So there is no us and them. What you had at the onset was just separate cultures and separate languages, and we don't have those problems to that degree anymore. I mean, look around you in America. We've got Jewish, we've got Christian, we've got Hindu, we've got uh, Muslim, we've got uh, Buddhist, we've got Taoist, we've got pretty much everything here. So the cultural differences are at a minimum. The, 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 even the language barriers are at a minimum, because if you don't speak the language, someone within that group probably speaks your language, and you still get invited in. Or at least can get an explanation of what's going on within their sphere of involvement. But there really is no point in joining a religion just to become a political tool, just to become another voice for their favor. And if you choose not to decide, they'll just go ahead and say, well, he, w he didn't say it, but he, w he would have said turn left. That's bearing false witness. Maybe you didn't do it, but you're allowing them to do it, which makes you guilty by association. Or, or a liar by omission, at the very least. If you, did, if you believe they should turn right, tell them, I think we should turn right. You stand up and you say out loud, and loud enough for everyone to hear, I think we should build that house for the underprivileged family. I can't do it. I mean, don't get me wrong, I grew up in the Roman Catholic Church. And it's still to me a good idea. I mean, when you when you get down to it and you learn the actual esoteric aspects of the religion, 
it is no different than being a Buddhist or a Hindu. But religion today is also no different than being a Republican or Democrat. So when people come to me talking about religion, oh, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. You might as well have just said Republican or Democrat. Oh, I'm Buddhist. Oh, you're Libertarian. <laughs> That's all. That's all you're saying. What are you? I'm just a man looking for the way. I've got a few good ideas. I don't claim to know it all, but I'm willing to teach what I have learned. And that's what I've learned about religion. And that is why I will never pick a religion, no matter how beautiful it is. Because they're all beautiful. Just because it gets you in touch with a different culture. A culture you might have otherwise never touched base with. Because if you look, if you look into some of these cultures, just their religions, it makes you want to study just the culture, the, the basic culture. I mean, religion aside, to see, you know, what kind of people were these back then, or even now, today. But yeah, politics. <laughs> it's into everything. You got inner office politics. The way things should ought to happen, things you shouldn't say, people you shouldn't speak to, people you shouldn't speak about. It's in everything. Familial or household politics, same thing. It's like a disease. <laughs> politics. It pretty much ruins everything. And the only way to free yourself from it is to not participate don't even show up for the rally because if you show up to the rally everyone's going to assume you're going to vote this way and if you vote that way everyone's going to turn on you those unspoken rules that get you every time anyway we're about to the 30 minute mark so I'm going to go ahead and call it if you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. You can favorite it if you want. Uh, leave comments down below if you want. And uh, if you would like to come back and get more information, or you just like the sound of my voice, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there.